Yeah, this is this is one of our darkest days as a city, and I know that we are much better than this. We know that the world is watching, and we cannot allow our city to devolve into chaos because of a you know a, a small group of criminals. Well, we're talking about hundreds of arrests, maybe not a small group of criminals. That was the mayor of the city of Baltimore, Stephanie Rawlings Blake, heard last night uh, under fire today as critics say she gave permission indirectly to rioters to continue their looting and destruction by asking for space. Uh, that's a good place to start a roundtable. We'll bring in Javier Manjares, who's joining us, sharktank.com, mm -hmm. shark-tank.com. Yes, thank you. Very important distinction. Dave Ehrenberg, uh, state attorney here in Florida in Palm Beach County. Uh, Dave, I want to start with you because there is a lot of questions today about the response time, the amount of force here. Um, I know in situations in the past when there is tension building in a community, you will be proactive and go out there and try to defuse that. But when you see something like this, it's impossible to say there's not some level of failure uh, to communicate between the police department, the authorities, and the community. Yeah, and we've worked hard here in Palm Beach County to have more communication up front. When you see something like this happen, it is because of a breakdown in communication, a feeling of helplessness, and, and leaders do need to take responsibility. They need to get there before this occurs. So you have a community discussion and that the leaders of the protest know who to call within government to make sure that their grievances are aired instead of just taking to the streets. So I do think that to a certain extent, there's a failure of leadership here by the government officials. Yeah, this flyer posted on social media from these high school kids at a mall and then escalated from there. Javier, I want to ask you about what the president said today from the Rose Garden. Talking about the fact that the violence we've seen in Baltimore, different case here, but the underlying tensions are not new. What do you think? Well, I mean, they're not new in the sense that I, th I think it's always racially uh, motivated by on his part in his administration. But again, uh, you, we're, we're talking earlier about uh, uh, this ongoing uh, over years of, of repression, if you would, that the black community seems to think that it's been going on. Yeah, to some extent, yes, but I, I think, I, I disagree. I think these people are, are know what they're doing. The the, uh, the mayor of Baltimore, she's right. It's not, uh, she's wrong in the sense that it's not a small group of criminals, a large group of criminals. And there's a huge criminal element. You saw this in Ferguson. They're, they know what's right and wrong. They, they, choose to, they chose to riot and harm, and, and a lot of them, it, it happens what happens this past weekend. They know what they're doing. I have no, I don't give any excuse for what they've son, de said and done. Well, those who have been arrested Today, they're using the Freddie Gray death as the uh, impetus for all this here. But how many cities in America right now do you think are close to seeing something like this? Of course, Baltimore has a unique set of circumstances here, but we saw this in Ferguson. We've seen it in other places. We saw national protests across the country. Uh, the list has gone on, but this could happen in any community, it seems like almost. Yeah, and it's happened in a lot of communities. I, I'm from Miami, and when I grew up in the 80s, you had the Overtown riots. And, right. Mm -hmm. You know, so it's, this is not the first time this has happened. You just have to work in advance to try to prevent this from happening. And then when it does happen, you need a strong response because one thing is there is no excuse for violence. But and we heard that after Ferguson. Right. We're hearing that now. We heard that after the Overtown riots back in the 80s, or at least you can see the coverage of that, and also LA riots, LA riots in the mm -hmm. 1990s. Yeah. But again, uh, again, going back to what the president said, there is that response after the fact. There seems to be some coalition. There's people cleaning up the streets of Baltimore. But where do we go from here now? And how do you diffuse these situations in the future? Well, as I said, really, you need to get into the community. You need to uh, not be seen. The only time you're seen is when uh, you're behind a shield or at a press conference. You need to start meeting with people and getting there so that there's a feeling of ownership. It's not just us against them. All right. Yeah, but where are these, where are these the community leaders? Where let's talk about that, because I want to play a clip from the police commissioner who was supposed to be at that news conference. You didn't see him, but let's play a uh, soundbite from Anthony Batts. The Bloods and the Crips had a meeting yesterday, uh, validated and fair, verified when they said, they said at the conclusion of uh, Mr. Gray's funeral day, uh, each group was intended to, to kill and take out a police officer. Stunning. <laughs> Stunning. So that's the response. That's what the police, you know, obviously they're under fire for the response here, but they're, that gives you an indication of what these cops are dealing with on the street today. All right, but where, again, where are these communities? Where are the Al Sharpness of the world? You know, where are these people that say they're within those community organizers, if you would? Why aren't they, like, like Mr. Ehrenberg says, why aren't they being proactive here? Why, why didn't they qualm this before it even started? And again, he's right. This ha can happen in any other, every other any country, a state in the, in the United States of America. But where are these leaders? I mean, you can't rely solely on the police. They're a reactionary force. Yeah, and we are seeing incredible pictures. The cars burn out, the rioting, the, the live pictures. People are on social media streaming themselves in the streets here. 
here. Do you think that the visuals that we're getting, Dave, that is something the president highlighted today, that is one aspect of it that is very different. The, the access, you can see the raw footage of these uh, protests carrying out. Is that what it takes to change things, people to see a different a angle or perspective on this? And I hope that there's some change because, you know, you think the technology may uh, may spread the image that violence is not acceptable, it is not the answer, and people can see what the police are going through right now. But I don't know if just technology alone is going to solve these problems. These problems have been around since, look, Tiananmen Square, we had that, right. and there was technology there. It, it didn't stop it there either. So uh, there's a long history of violence. It doesn't matter that technology exists. Well, it just means more people know about that it. That picture, the pictures of Tiananmen Square right. definitely changed things uh, in terms of China. But that They still overran to, the, the... That's right. true. It didn't the, change uh, that day, yeah. but it definitely had an impact Protesters. on the future of China. Maybe this will have an impact on the future of these types of protests. Uh, Dave Ehrenberg, Javier Manjarez, thank you guys very much for being here and waiting on this issue. Great to talk to you both. We're coming back here. Miranda will be back as well. More to come here on Newsmax now right after this.